All right, so I've been working on a lot of stuff, um, a lot of help from Frederick. Actually, Frederick's taken a lot of ideas and made them even better. Um, but this is uh, yet another sneak peek of OS6. Um, it's uh, even more being added, um, but this is uh, pretty cool. So this is something I was working on um, for a little bit, and then uh, Frederick actually had some ideas on how to make it even better. So this is kind of the combination. So the concept behind this is basically a style modifier. So um, for those of you who build styles or who have used the editor or who play around with styles, um, this will make a little more sense. Um, but basically, it's it's taking the customization that you can do on Profi and now increasing it tenfold. Um, so style modifiers, um, from where I was coming at, was it's kind of like the toolkit in like you know a Photoshop or any kind of a, you know graphic editing program, where you can have. A, uh, basically, if you think of your blade as an image, but then do a bunch of stuff to it. So, um, probably not explaining it the best way, um, so probably better to show. But So, this is a regular gradient. Um, this is just a static gradient. It's a red, green, blue gradient, and of course it creates a rainbow effect because it's doing the blending between. Um, now, with gradients, they're great. You can use gradients for this type of blade, but what gradients can't do is they can't kind of change behavior. So now, with a style, style modifier, we can actually modify this gradient and do a bunch of other stuff with it. So first up, now some of these functions we've kind of, in OS 5, we've been able to get around them by layering a bunch of different layers on top of each other. Um, but this is going to simplify it, but it also adds to it. So now this is basically a gradient in a bump. So it's a style modifier of a bump applied to the gradient. So it's actually the same red green blue gradient but now when we apply it to a bump it actually creates this rainbow effect where it's going to be blue to green to red so you get this really cool effect so um, I have a lot of ideas for usage of this and I've been doing the compound colors already on like my uh, you know clash and lockup effects um, this takes it up a no up several notches because now you can do um, different styles and have them apply with a bump and then of course all of this now is going to be responsive so this bump is actually responsive to twist angle so I can move it however I want and it keeps that gradient so instead of having to do you know in this case I would have had to do five layers to get this color effect um, I would have had to do a red orange yellow green and blue multiple bump layers just to get this effect. Now this is a single layer with this new style modifier for a bump applied to a gradient and I get this in a single layer effect. Um, and again for those of you who've built the styles you know that something like this, being able to build something like this is technically feasible but it would be really um, complex. These new style modifiers just make that one layer really simple and you get this beautiful effect. And if you can think about it, you can apply not just colors, you can apply effects to this. So I have a lot of plans for this type of stuff. Now another one is a smooth step. So now this, the way the smooth step works is this is actually, again, the same gradient applied to a smooth step, but the size of the smooth step is actually being controlled by twist. So what it is is it starts at one size so it's going to be there. So that's my gradient at the initial size. And then if I move it, the gradient's going to move, but it's going to keep that same uh, basic setup. So it's actually red, green, but then the rest blue. Hopefully the camera shows it. But when I get and tightened up, you can see that. So you can apply kind of an easy gradient to your smooth steps. So you think of your melt effects, your drag effects. You'll be able to apply that as well. And then related to that, this is what I'm calling a compression, um, and what it is is, again, it's that initial gradient. Now, the initial gradient was an even spread of red to green to blue. This is now compressed 200%, uh, so it's basically half. So what ends up happening is it goes red to green, the green is at the quarter mark, and then to blue the rest of the way. So typically when you do a gradient it's going to be evenly dispersed across the blade but now you can compress it so again thinking about it like in terms of working with a graphics program it's like I compressed that image of the gradient down in this case to about 50 percent of the blade and then the rest of the blade is just blue so if you wanted kind of a skew or off-center gradient you can now apply that
Now this is a flint, a, a fire blade. Now this is my uh, real flame uh, color scheme. So it's got a gradient in it. So it's got a uh, yellow to orange to red gradient built in just to make the flame look more realistic. Um, and flames are great, but the flame style has some limitations. But now with the new style modifiers, actually a lot of those limitations are going to go away. So that's the regular flame. So now I can take a flame, and this is brand new being able to do this. So you, again, you could do this kind of with a bunch of layers if you mimicked it, but this is an actual flame. And this is using what I'm calling the mirror out style modifier. So what it's doing is it's, and it, the center point is actually responsive. So I'll put, so the center point's here. I can slide the center point down to here. I can slide it up. But now that center point, what's happening with mirror out is the center point's here, is it's actually mirroring all the pixels up and down to do the exact same effect. So uh, typically what we were doing when we'd have like the, you know, the uh, Eye of Sauron or uh, the, uh, what was it? The, uh, why can't I think of the name of it? my hyperspace they would have a center point and then they would have stripes moving out this is an actual flame style that has a mirror out modifier on it that then makes it mirror both directions um, so it just opens it up and it actually makes it a simpler style so instead of having a layer or mix multiple things this is just applied to a fire style and then because we have a mirror out we can also do a mirror in so this is a mirror in and again the midpoint is where it ends now and again, this is responsive, so I can move that midpoint up the blade to almost to the tip. And this is all twist angle for all these demos, or I can move it down, and you'll see the flames will keep meeting in the middle. So, so the flame now is meeting there. Um, and then, of course, I got my center wipe in and out. And now another brand new thing is we also have the ability to invert a style. So one of the things we haven't been able to officially do, we can mimic it with stripes and stuff, um, but is actually reverse a flame. So now you have a true reverse flame by using an invert. So the invert actually flips your hilt and your tip for whatever style you have on it. So now I have a flame that starts at the top and comes down. So this is yet another style modifier where I can invert whatever style I want um, and use it a different way. And then, again, this is kind of early demos. You can actually take all of that and combine. So this is going to be kind of a combination of, er of uh, several things. So this is a real fire set up with a moving bump. But then it also has the mirror out applied to it. So it's doing the mirror effect. And on top of that, this actually has a compression so that the whole flame is compressed to half the blade size. So you get your full blade effect of flame mirrored from the center, but then it's actually compressed also to be, it's a 200% compression, so that it, you're seeing this entire flame effect that normally you would see on the length of the blade is happening in only half of the blade, and it's movable. Um, and of course, all this stuff now, all these style modifiers, they're going to be able to apply to any of the styles you want. So you can have, you can take your style, you can apply several modifiers to it and come up with something completely unique, completely custom. Um, and there's just kind of, as if we didn't have enough uh, customization possible, uh, just so much more. I have a ton of plans um, for effects, for base colors, for uh, just unique styles. Uh, but having these style modifiers now built into the OS... It's just going to let you really get uh, all kinds of new and cool stuff added to your saber. So lots more to come for OS 6. Um, this is uh, yet another big addition. Um, and then there's going to be so much more possible. This is just a quick demo. Um, just the ability to do all these different modifiers to the styles now. Uh, the sky's really the limit. So hope you enjoy.